Okay, um, we're now going to move on from having looked integration by reversing the chain rule, then we looked at integration using what I referred to as the log trick. Uh, we're going to go on to integration by substitution, one of the two main methods that is employed in this module. Um, so I'm going to piece, the, I'm going to spread this out over a few videos. Um, really so that you can get an idea of the complexity that some problems can get into but also to scaffold it so that you can learn the process first and then you can start to look at more complicated examples. Um, so what I'm going to do first is really focus on types of problem that we should already really know how to do using reversing chain rule and log trick. Okay, or that's the theory. So I'm going to start off with one of the most basic, is looking at x minus 1 uh, to the 5 dx. Okay, and I'm going to leave it as an indefinite integral for this video. Um, we're going to look at definite integrals afterwards. Okay, so first of all, um, the way that this works with chain rule is that, uh, well, sorry, not chain rule, uh, integration by substitution, is that we need a substitution, or we need to make a substitution. And the problem is that we have this x minus 1. If this was just x to the 5, then I could integrate that really quite easily. But it's not, okay? We've got x minus 1 to the 5. So that is the problem. So I make u is equal to x minus 1. I make the substitution, okay? So... That's going to be my substitution. And then, well, because now, if I then rewrote this, I would be integrating u to the 5 with respect to x. But um, you can't integrate u with respect to x. We've changed the variable. So we need to get it into du. Now the way that you do this, and to make this replacement of dx, is to differentiate your substitution. So define du by dx, which in this case would just be 1. Now by rearranging this, and treating the derivative as if it's a fraction, which usually is a big no-no, okay, uh, multiply both sides by dx, and you get du is equal to dx. So in this case, you could make a straightforward swap of du to dx, or rather dx to du. So now we're just integrating u to the 5 du. Now we know how to do that, because that's going to refer it back to a core 1 example. So you add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and we've got that constant of integration c. And now, well, u was x minus 1. So this is x minus 1 to the power of 6 over 6 plus c. Or you could write it as 1 sixth, x minus 1 to the 6 plus c. And this may well have been one that, you know, if you're very good at reversing the chain rule, you might have been able to spot that immediately. Okay? So... This is how the chain rule works. Let's look at a couple of more examples of this. Um, I'm going to do a similar one here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it to uh, 2x minus 1 to the 5. OK? So, oh, I'm dropping things. Hit the wall as well. Brilliant. So u, this time, is going to be the 2x minus 1. So we differentiate this because we need to get a replacement for dx. So in this case, du by dx is 2. Multiply both sides by dx. We notice we haven't got a straightforward conversion here. So if I halve both sides, or divide both sides by 2, I get this. So dx can be replaced with one half du. So I've now got the integral of u to the 5 times one half 
du, because that's the replacement for dx. So this is my replacement u, and this is my replacement for dx. Now the one half can be brought out front of the integral, and now I'm integrating u5 du, which is the same as what we had last time. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Okay, so u was 2x minus 1, so this is 1 twelfth 2x minus 1 to the 6 plus c. So I've done two steps in one there. The 1 half times by the, the 6th becomes 1 twelfth, which I've pulled out the front. Okay? So there is another example. One more example, just so we can get this clear. Um, let's have the integral of um, 2x squared, 3x uh, cubed, plus 5 uh, cubed dx. Okay, so this looks a lot more complicated. Okay, and it is probably uh, worthwhile that you think, well, um, Remember, when we're doing reverse chain rule, you look at what is inside the bracket. If you differentiate that and it's close to what's outside of the bracket, then we can use backwards chain rule. And likewise, you can use integration by substitution. They work in the same way. So 3x cubed plus 5 differentiated is 9x squared, which is almost what we have on the outside. So the replacement, the substitution, will be this 3x cubed plus 5. You differentiate it because we still need to get a replacement for dx. It's the same process every time. That gets us 9x squared. We multiply both sides by dx. And then I need to divide both sides by this 9x squared. So I've got 1 over 9x squared du is dx. So the integral is now 2x squared times by u cubed times by 1 over 9x squared du. Now this looks particularly horrible, okay? I don't have a replacement for the 2x squared, but what you should notice is that the x squared here can get cancelled with that one. Because I've got x squared divided by x squared, which makes 1. I've also got this 2 and this 1 ninth, which multiply to make 2 ninths. So 2 ninths can be brought outside of the integral sign, leaving me with u cubed du inside. So this is 2 ninths times by, this is core 1 again, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, we've got a plus c constant of integration, so that's 2 ninths times 1 quarter, which is 2 over 36, which is 1 over 18. u to the 4 plus c, and that u was 3x cubed plus 5. Now, when you're dealing with these integration by substitutions, um, where it's an indefinite integral, remember you've got to put back the u at the end, okay? So that's a more complicated example. Um, and I'll say that in core 3, or the similar module, um, it is 9 times out of 10 that you'll be given the substitution to work with. Um, if you've done enough, it starts to become obvious which would need to be the substitution, okay? So you wouldn't make u is equal to 2x squared, for example, okay?